Let's milk the word and get the meat out of it. Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven gather together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. He's making more distinctions now. And God called the dry land earth, and gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, and whose seed is in itself, Eat upon the earth, and it was so. Who listen? I gotta read that again. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Listen, whatever God has placed in you, here's another little hidden goodie with that one. Whatever God has placed in you. As you bear fruits of righteousness and holiness, fruits of love and mercy, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the seed that God planted in you is going to germinate and things are going to start coming forth that you never imagined. You were already seeded and planted, watered, nurtured, and as you grow, you will bear much fruit because your seed is already in you. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. You think about how the signs of the seasons, life comes in seasons. The good things happen in seasons. There are good seasons in our lives. There are bad seasons in our lives. There's rain, there's storm, there's thunder, there's lightning, there's wind, there's cold, there's warmth, there's sunlight, there's fall, spring. All these seasons happen in our personal lives. And when they happen, we get mad at God. We get frustrated with life. We want to throw in the towel on ourselves, on God, on each other. And we forget, no, we're part of this planet, which means the cycle of life is a combination of seasons, good and bad, cold and warm, light and dark. How will you handle your seasons in your life? Moving right along. Gets deep, doesn't it? Wow. <laughs> and God made two great lights. Mm, mm, mm. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Gotta stop there. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm running into stuff every step of the way. What is the, the, the that great light? The sun. We know that. That's obvious. The lesser light is the moon. Do you realize that God rules everything? He rules everything. 
He gave all authority to his son, Jesus Christ, over everything. And do you realize that the moon, can it cannot produce its own light. The moon can only reflect or duplicate, so to speak, the real light that comes from the sun. Listen to this. Satan can only duplicate the real light that comes from the S-O-N, Jesus Christ. He can only imitate, mimic. Do you hear what I'm saying? He can duplicate. But let me tell you this. He cannot create. He cannot create uh, something out of nothing. Hmm. He can do little magic tricks. He's a father of lies. Now, there are times if we were to gauge our lives by the moon, we would fall for a lot of lies. Because when the moon is half full, the sun is still fully glowing. Just because the moon is half full doesn't mean there's something wrong. Just because the moon has just got a little, a little, uh, I forget what you call it, that little beam on the side and the whole moon looks dark, does not mean the sun has fallen asleep. But the nights look darker, don't they? They're colder, aren't they? Think about it. See, just because Satan brings cold darkness and fear and intimidation in your life, you're not to believe the illusion because the sun is shining bright, whether it's within your peripheral vision or if it's out of sight. It doesn't mean it's not glowing. When you can't see God in your circumstance does not mean that God is not moving in your life, that he is not a very present help. But Satan will try to make it look like God is a wimp, God is impotent, God is a deadbeat dad, and God is a liar. That's a lie from the pit. Don't base the sun. Don't judge the sun based on what you see happening with the moon. All right. Moving right along. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Now, you know, the other thing that is good about the moon is no matter how dark your night is, have you ever seen a fully moonlit night? You can drive down the street without your headlights is so well lit. Well, see, the thing that God promises in his word is that he will never leave his people groping in the darkness. There is a darkness out there at night when the moon is not shining or it's extremely cloudy. And when you're out there where there are no city lights, it can be so dark that you can't even see your hand moving in front of your face. That's dark. And sometimes you hit some very dark areas in your life. But remember, no matter how dark that night looks, the sun is just on the other side of the horizon. It hasn't gone anywhere. When your cycle comes around, you're going to see the sun. And you know it's a new day. Always remember, the sun never goes away. It's us that cycles away from it and it gets out of sight. Let's read verse 16 again. I want to make sure we flow. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. And Satan does rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day, 
And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. That's the sky. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Your life is to be fruitful. Your life is to be productive. You are to progress. You are to grow. You are to help develop others. Your life is to be about something. Don't be shucking and jiving out in the streets, talking loud, saying nothing, being about nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Don't be a big nothing. See what God can create you to be. He will recreate you. He will get rid of the old mess. He'll take you and make something beautiful out of your life. He'll take a wretch, a wretch like you and me, and show us his loving concern. And by his grace, he'll make our lives a new and better one. Hmm. All right. Now, verse 23. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image hmm. after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hmm. And blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree of the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, we're going to stop here. But we're going to go back over some of these verses real quick because I want you to see some of the little hidden analogies, the little hidden messages and the hidden meanings, the hidden treasures that are in God's word. Mm. When he tells them to replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and all, all the, the living creatures of the earth, Side note on that dominion issue. Years ago, when I was walking down the street to show you the kind of authority we have in Christ Jesus as God's people, I was walking down the street and there was a pack of dogs. And one thing you never want is to be attacked by a pack of dogs during mating season. They go ballistic on you. And that's what they were getting ready. They were hitting me from all sides. They hadn't gotten to me yet. And when I saw them coming out of the woodwork, coming all at me from a 360 degree angle, I mean, they were coming from northeast, southwest, northwest, southeast, all kind of directions. 
and I felt like the target in the middle and all the arrows coming at me from everywhere. And yes, I got scared because I had been attacked before and all the cussing and screaming in the world wouldn't get rid of them. I got scratched and bit every time. But this time, I knew I had one weapon on my side and I had never tried it against a dog. I had done it against demons, but not against a dog. And I hollered, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I probably said it in warp speed, but I said it. You know, those dogs looked like they were struck with instant confusion. It was as if they were no longer aware I was there and they had no idea what they were running towards or what they were getting ready to do. And they all slowly started turning back around and meandering back where they came from. And I went through them unscathed. That's dominion. Do you notice man can train almost anything? You notice that? But the one thing we must have dominion over is ourselves. Hmm. Self-control, self-discipline. Think about that. When you utilize the authority that God has given you, you end up staying away from playing the doormat. You're not somebody's flunky. You're not somebody's plaything. You're not somebody's patsy. And you're nobody's fool. God called you to take dominion, not be dominated. Male or female, you are not to be dominated and ruled over with a hard iron fist. You're not to be abused and beaten, misused. You're not to be trashed, played, and wasted. No. Every single man and woman on this earth is to replenish and have dominion. Dominion, baby, not be dominated. All right. Now, sometimes what our problem is in life is we don't know who we are. I can look you dead in your eye. Do you know who you are? Do you know who your daddy is? Do you know that you are peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy generation? Do you know who you are? And for those of you who choose not to follow God, you obviously do not know who you are. Hmm. All right. When you are to be fruitful and multiply, you are not to suck the life out of someone else. You are to give life. You are to edify. You're to replenish and refresh. Be a blessing. Don't be a curse in someone's life. If you enjoy being a curse, you need to reassess yourself and find out if you and the devil are on one accord. Because there's something wrong when you don't want to give life. There's something wrong when you want to take life away. There's something sick up here when you don't love enough to give a person a, a blessing to replenish them, to build them up, to edify them, to encourage them, to nurture them. What is wrong inside of you, those of you who like hurting people? Those of you who like tearing people's lives down, tearing them to shreds, making them feel like a nobody. What is it about you that enjoys that? We will go into Genesis chapter 2 
on the next video.